Wait, it's recording right now? Mm hmm Hello everyone, Hi. my name is Dana, this is Alex, and today we are continuing my Enneagram series. Alex, which Enneagram are you? <laughs> I'm an eight. Alex is an Enneagram 8, so as you guys know, I am an Enneagram 1, and so in this series, I'm just going through and I am featuring a person from each Enneagram type, and we are talking a little bit about our friendship and what it looks like in the context of us being those two different Enneagram types. So, Dana and I have known each other since... 2013 so we've been friends for at least six years now it's always been like a older brother younger sister kind of thing um, but also in college you know when you don't want to study at all and you find buddies to just hang out with just for the sake of hanging out that's what <laughs> Dana and I did we just chilled a lot of the times um, distracted each other from yes, studying <laughs> so yes we've known each other for quite a while I would oh, say we're yes. pretty good friends I do feel like we have a like general understanding of how the other one like operates and thinks through things and stuff too. Yeah, I, I would think that we know each other pretty well. Do you want to tell us a little bit about the characteristics of an eight? Definitely a Neogram type that is more showy. Um, eights are known as a challenger. They have a tendency to be a little bit more hot-headed, passionate about what they think very opinionated with certain topics that they feel strongly about. Definitely have a tendency to question authority a lot of the times. It's just a natural tendency. It's not as if I want to be rebellious or anything. It's just something that I just naturally tend to do. Eights have a tendency to calling people dumb and stuff. <laughs> Making a lot of jokes, uh, being sarcastic, yeah. So pretty much uh, relate to an eight very well. Okay, so thinking about the characteristics of an eight and the characteristics of a one, on a scale of one to 10, how compatible would you say these two types are in terms of friendship? They can be compatible on certain levels, but in some other ways, they can be very incompatible. Maybe like a three or a four. Dana and I are really <laughs> good friends. Four. Okay. This, the question isn't about like how good Dana and yeah. I are friends, but just with type ones and eights and how compatible they are as friends, I'd say a three or four. Not, mm -hmm. yeah, not very compatible. I wouldn't put it quite that low. One of she the like higher. She should put it lower. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now that we've kind of talked about the Enneagram 8 as a whole and kind of your opinion on the compatibility of it, we're going to talk a little bit about our friendship in particular. Enneagram 1s and 8s bring a common concern with fighting for truth and justice in their world. They both often feel, although in different ways and for different reasons, that it's up to them to stand against whatever they perceive as injustice or falseness. I would agree with this if we see eye to eye with the same things. I agree. If yeah. we have like a same opinion, I feel like we're very passionate about it like needs to be fixed or changed or whatever. Yeah. Both are willing to sacrifice a great deal to do what they believe needs to be done. I didn't see that. Yeah. I think we both sacrifice a pretty big deal when it comes to what we each see as right or wrong. Hopefully the things that we are right is actually right. Um, but yes, yeah, I can see that. For both, fairness is very important. Ones, though, bring a sense of absolute or ideal truth in justice, whereas eights can bring a more practical and immediate approach to these concepts. Yeah. I thought that was very interesting because I think that part's very true. Yeah, I think eights have a tendency to focus on the practicality of how to carry those things out in the real world. But yeah, as a one, I can see you be more focused on whether or not that's right or wrong, um, mm -hmm. that being the truth, etc. This combination can be very powerful. They accomplish things with a clear sense of purpose and personal mission. Both are very decisive and direct. Would have to disagree. Dana does have a tendency to not be so direct. Or decisive. Or decisive. Okay, so I think I'm like indecisive in a sense where it takes me a long time to like make a decision. But then I think once I've made a decision, I'm very like absolute in that decision. And so I feel like that's where I would call myself decisive, but not so much in the like getting to a decision. Oh, I see. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. And then I feel like with the directness, I feel like that just depends because I feel like you think I'm like very not direct, but then I feel like other people think I am direct. So I feel like it just depends. I can on, see like, that. Yeah. Well, it's their... probably subjective. Yeah. Because I'm probably more direct than you. 
Yeah, I would yeah. say you're definitely more direct. <laughs> yeah, I'm more direct than the average person, so that That's makes true. sense, yeah. Eights admire the one's convictions and are intrigued by the challenge of getting to know a one. In many ways, these two types are opposites, though they both can learn a great deal from each other if they're willing to listen to someone with such different values, reactions, and ways of doing things. Interacting with the one, I think I'm very already like curious why ones are so convicted about certain things why they think why their stance in certain issues and situations are so strong and so there definitely is a curiosity when it comes to that i think it's interesting because i feel like it talks a little bit about like the challenge of getting to know one another or like if they're like willing to get to know one another and mm -hmm. i feel like we haven't necessarily had those challenges Mm. Yeah, it wasn't necessarily a challenge in terms of getting to know each other. Like, I feel like that was pretty, like, natural. But then I feel like as we have, like, gotten to know each other more, I feel like things that we, like, disagree on have come up more. And that's where you have to, like, I think, learn how to kind of learn from each other in those different perspectives. Yeah, I agree. So now I'm going to have you read the negative attributes. What causes issues between a 1 and an 8 is how different they are from each other. This is a relatively rare romantic pairing. It is easier for them to be friends or colleagues than to live intimately together. I would say that this is very true. I always tell people that one of my deal breakers is if the person is an 8. Like, I feel like I cannot date an 8. That is not very nice. I don't like you too. Moving. Not that I don't like you, it says we're good friends. Well, both want to be in charge, both want to accomplish something significant, but they tend to disagree about the means to take. I think it is true that we can both want to be in charge, but I feel it's like true. you want to be in charge more. Yes, I, I love being in charge. Yeah, Dana and my other buddy used to make fun of me for always wanting to drive. It's a control issue. Yeah, <laughs> he so. always has to drive. Yeah, so yeah, still being made fun of, clearly. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, I would agree. Yeah, ones ultimately begin to draw a line if they see eights going too far in the pursuit of their self-interest. What do you think? So I think it's a little bit different because I wouldn't say that you like go after things in like a selfish pursuit necessarily. Uh -huh. But I think sometimes you like decide something and then once you've decided it, you're just like gonna do it. Yeah. Like you're just barreling like ahead with it. And then I think I'm like a little bit more like I like wanna like think through that and make sure that that's like the right decision first. And then I, I guess that's how it can look as if it was done in self-pursuit. It's done mm -hmm. in a manner where it's like, I'm gonna do it like this and it's going to be pretty headstrong and so others are going to perceive that as like oh well um this person is just wanting to do it his way ones can begin to see eights as crude untrustworthy and violent okay so i would say those are like very negative so i wouldn't necessarily say all of this but i do think you can be aggressive and insensitive sometimes i tell you that not necessarily towards me should but. not be public knowledge <laughs> but fine you can i be. said fine on the other hand eight c ones as hypocrites who <laughs> preach one thing publicly while doing the opposite privately can confirm this i think ones have a tendency to put standards on other people but when it comes to themselves it's harder for them to follow those standards and so when they condemn and judge other people when it comes to themselves obviously in a private setting they already do that they already judge and um feel ashamed whatever but as an eight it's just like i don't see that so i feel as though i have to act upon that and i have to know that 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 person is really struggling and really thinking through that if that makes sense mm -hmm. i feel like it's um it's like I feel like one set like a really high standard for themselves and others. Yeah. So then I feel like sometimes you can hold others to that standard and you yourself like might also not be meeting it. But then I feel like it's um, easy to like fall into a place of judgment of both yourself and others. It's but then true. you don't always see the judgment that you're having upon yourself because I feel like that can be a little bit more internal. Exactly. So I'd say that's exactly. kind of where it comes from. So yeah, I think that's the way in which eights may be a little bit more merciless. They can both get into rigid positions and feel that they cannot back down. This is very exaggerated, mm -hmm. but I will say that like in the ways that we think that we're right, um, yeah. I feel like we have a tendency to bear down and defend our positions before we give way. Yeah, I would say a lot of the times we agree on like how we think through things. So then I feel like this isn't like a common occurrence, but I would say when we do disagree, I think that we both like disagree very firmly and like we like stand in our like opinion and like we're not going to change our mind. Sure. 
So then I feel like that's where it comes up. I think overall, this like pairing, I feel like is a rough one um, and is not necessarily as compatible. But then I feel like for us, it like has worked. Uh, you know, like Alex mentioned before, we did meet because we went to uh, the same church. And so I think that it really helps that we have a similar foundation in terms of our values. Um, so we are both Christian. And I think that, you know, a lot of the tendencies of a one in eight can be to be really like firm in our opinions and really unwavering. And I think that naturally that's maybe what both of us like lean towards in our like natural inclinations. But I think because we do have that foundation where we are, you know, trying to live a life serving Christ and serving others, I feel like we try to like turn away from those inclinations that are selfish in nature and to be able to care for one another so i feel like because of that while a lot of the things are true i think that they're not necessarily true in our friendship because of that foundation agreed yeah, yeah. so i would say for us they aren't necessarily super accurate mm -hmm. and lastly do you have any of your favorite enneagram 8 memes to show us i do okay I have, show them to us i have many when someone tries to tell an eight what to do we don't do that here that's very true you can't ever tell alex what to do i feel like even in like casual things like hangouts and stuff if he is the one who decided what we're doing he gets a lot more joy out of it than if someone else said it even if it's like the same thing like we could both want to go get ice cream but if someone else suggests it you'll want to do it less than if you suggested it whatever <laughs> it's true in a different facet um here's this guy that is ugly smiling throwing up a peace sign and next to the grave it's labeled all of our weaknesses <laughs> Because <laughs> eights don't like to um, admit that they have weaknesses, nope. which I think is also true of you. No, not at all. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, no, I was saying that you're right. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 we don't like to admit them at all. Like, I feel like Alex is always the one who, Okay, like, I heard it. No, I feel like he's one who is always, like, trying to listen to other people's problems and, like, be there. Like, I feel like you're a very, like, loyal friend and you always try to, like, be there and listen to other people's problems, but then you very, like, rarely talk about your own problems. It's gonna stay this way. Yeah, I see. <laughs> <laughs> so, lastly, what is one thing that you feel like the world should know about your Enneagram type? Do I care? That was just the most eight response. <laughs> 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 All right, well, moving okay, along. Okay, I do <laughs> have one. <laughs> they don't like sharing their affections with other people. And so if you do have friends that are eight, just know that we deeply care for you. We care about you guys, even though we're being sarcastic and direct. Even seemingly though they're... unloving. <laughs> <laughs> even though they're down to create some conflict with you, yes. they care about you. Yes. Well, on that note, we are going to end this video here today. So Alex, thank you for joining me on my channel. And for everyone else, look forward to the next installment of my Enneagram series. Well, go ahead and leave a comment down below if you know any eights and tell me about how your friendship is with them and how that works for you. And other than that, thank you guys for watching. Go ahead and like this video. And if you haven't already, go ahead and hit the subscribe button right there. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye guys. Okay. I forgot Given the question. <laughs> Because why are there so many flies? Bye.